Okay, so tonight, as we're approaching Hanukkah, Shalom Eichon So there's a major theme on Hanukkah, not just on Hanukkah, but throughout the year, but it's highlighted in Hanukkah. The Torah tells us to be a light unto the nations, right? It's supposed to inspire everyone, including our, not, our non-Jewish neighbors. And I wanted to, to understand this a little bit deeper. And let's start from the halachic obligation to influence non-Jews. The Rambam in Manari says, Siva Moshe Piyak, where Moshe Rabbeinu was commanded by God to tell us that we are responsible to force all of the people in the world to keep the seven laws of Noah. And, of course, oh, Vitaly oh, Shalom Well, no, that, those are the, that's the word that I'm going to use. I'm going to explain in a second. What does it mean to force? So when the Jewish people had a government, they had to administer law and order. So they had to put in, you know, for their policemen and their judges, and that and, and that the non-Jews had to follow the seven laws of Noah to live in the Jewish country. They had to; they were responsible to live by the law of the land. What was the law of the land? The law of, law of Hashem. So it doesn't mean the non-Jews had to put on tefillin, but they had to keep the seven laws of Noah. Now, what if? Uh, a Jew is not doesn't have there's no government no Jewish Jews, Jews are not in charge what's supposed to happen so then they are not able to coerce anyone to follow their laws but they are responsible to try they are responsible to try in a positive way in a good way to inspire non-Jews to keep their seven laws of no some people think they look at this Rambam they look at these words by Maimonides and they think the Rambam is talking about uh, a Jewish court Jewish court, uh, there's a halachic obligation to the court to be responsible for non-Jews. But Rebbe brought many proofs that this isn't true. And it's just a, a it's, it's, that's not what the Ramah means. Ramah is talking to everybody. One of the proofs, there are many proofs, just to share one of them. One of them is like this. It's a law that if you have a slave, you have to, your slave has to follow the seven laws of Noah. And the Kassif Mishra says you have to force your slave to follow those laws. The Kassif Mishra says why you have to force your slave. He says it's part of the commandment of, of, of uh, the Jewish people. They have, to for, they, they have to inspire all the non-Jews to keep the laws of Noah. So if this guy is in your jurisdiction, he belongs to you. So you have an obligation to make sure that he does the law. Now, that's the, the, the non-Jew who is your slave. But even if he's not your slave, if, you have, if you're doing business with them, why did Hashem arrange, God who feeds the whole world, why did he arrange that you should have to deal with this particular non-Jew? You, you, he could have given you your parnasa, he could have given you your livelihood without this. The reason why Hashem arranged that you should do business with this person wasn't just in order to, for, for business, it was also and mainly to fulfill the mitzvah of God, the commandment of Hashem. So you're working for a non-Jew, and you're going there every single day, and, uh, and, or you're doing business with a non-Jew. It's, it's, if you have a responsibility in a mitzvah to inspire them to believe in God and to keep the laws of God and, and, and the seven laws of Noah it's, it drama emphasizes it's not enough just to keep them you shouldn't keep them just because it makes sense to keep them he says if someone keeps them because it makes sense he is not considered from the pious of the Hasidic Umas Elam the pious of the non-Jews he's considered only from their wise men according to one text in Maimonides or another text in Maimonides not considered even wise but bottom line is, is you're supposed to tell the share of the non-Jews that there is a message from God for them and they have a, a purpose in the world and they have to keep this, these laws. It's a, of course, you're not able to coerce anybody, but you have to inspire people around you. You meet someone, it's for a reason. So we find, that, that's, that's the truth. The question is, how far do you have to go? And, and, and how much do you have to give of yourself for this? So we find something incredible in this week's Torah portion which highlights our responsibility to non-Jews. The Torah says that Joseph is in the, in the imprisoned for he's accused of a sin he did not commit. He's accused of sinning with the wife of Potiphar. And because he sins, he's accused of that sin, he's put into a pit, he's put into a dungeon, and he is serving all of the other people in the dungeon who, this was a dungeon for... Uh, top criminals of Egypt, the, the, the butler of the pharaoh, the baker of the pharaoh, and Joseph is there and he is serving them. And one day, the Torah says, it's an incredible um, 
the Torah is, is the, the Torah has a lot of tec- uh, textual um, speed bumps in the Torah. You see, you see, the Torah adds a word; it's, it's telling you something. You see, there's a word there; it's, it, it is a message. So here, the Torah says it's in a, in a way that you know there's something deeper here. One day, Yosef at Sadik, Joseph sees the butler and the baker, and they are sad. And Joseph says to them four words: "Why are your faces down today?" A question. <laughs> Genius. We're on death row. We're in a cell in Egypt. We're not. We're not. You know, uh, drinking pina coladas on, on the beach. What, what, what? We should be happy. What's going on? What's his question? What's his question? Why? What is? What? What, what is Yosef even asking them? Number two, you look at the words. The Torah says. He says he he. The Torah is describing the the butler and the baker, and how they're with Joseph, and they 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 had this dream. So we know who they are. But right when the Torah goes into the narrative between Joseph and them, the discussion between them, the Torah then says, Joseph spoke to the butler and the baker who were with him in the prison of... Uh, the Torah emphasizes that they were with him in the prison. Why does the Torah emphasize where they were? We know where they were. We know who they were. Why does the Torah again emphasize and he spoke to the butler and the baker who were with him in the prison of, of the Pharaoh? Well, what's the point of that? So there's some commentaries say, the Samson and Paul Hirsch, he says an interesting thing, is Joseph was different than, than most people. Most people, they look at people as like, in, in general terms. This person is a teacher, this person is a, is a doctor, this person. But Joseph didn't look like that way. Joseph looked at every person in great detail. He looked at them and he saw their eyes, and he saw their mouth, and he saw their personality, and every nuance Joseph was aware of. Now he's aware of every nuance. He does the same thing. Does the same thing? Watch out. Psychoanalyzing all the time, huh? Yes. Oh, beautiful boy, though. Well, so, so Joseph sees in everyone, and I, I was thinking, I, I went to visit Yitzhi Horowitz tonight. Thank you, Rabbi Horowitz is, is uh, incredible. I mean, he, same thing. He, he, it looks like, you know, he could barely notice you, barely see you. If you visit him, you, you could see. He, take, he takes the whole person in, and he knows exactly what's going on. And, and not just he knows what's going on, he knows him very, very deeply. Anyways. So that's who Yosef was. Not only that, Yosef was aware of the circumstance he was in. They were, he was in prison. And he was aware also that he's a Jew, and he's a destiny. And it could be that his ticket out of the prison is through these people. So Joseph, there is emphasizing he knew, not just he spoke to, to the other prisoners, he spoke to the butler, and he spoke to the baker. And he spoke to them, and he understood them, and he related to them, and he knew that this may be the moment that he needs to be there to hear what's going on, because this might be his ticket out. That's how the Samson for Hirsch explains this. But it seems a little bit like self-serving. You know, he's there, right? Like he, he's some kind of like uh, Sherlock Holmes, and he's focusing on them, and he gets every detail, he wants to know what's the, where's the clue, how he's going to get out of prison. That's, that's, that doesn't seem that that portrays who Joseph is. It seems like the, Joseph is just doing something for something else, and it doesn't seem like who we know Joseph to be. Joseph the righteous, Joseph the tzaddik. The Barbanel says something similar. Barbanel says something a little better, but still not, not telling us something that we're proud of. Barbanel says like this. What was Joseph's job? He had to. He was a servant of the other prisoners, of the, of the royal prisoners. So what did he do? He got them dressed. He made their beds. He fed them. He was a servant of the servants. He was a servant of the prisoners. One day they're sad. So why are they sad today? I'm in charge of taking care of them. And it could be that I didn't make their bed last night the right way. That's why they're sad. And maybe they're going to report me to, the, uh, to, 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 to the, my higher up and I'm going to get in trouble. So Joseph was concerned for himself when he saw them sad. Maybe it has to do with me. Maybe they're upset at me. Okay. But again, it's not, it doesn't satisfy us. This is Yosef at Tzaddik. This is a story in the Torah. What's the message over here? And the truth is, this is such an incredible message that, um, Mama, you have to live your whole life with this message. There's a, there's a teaching of Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan says, Ulven Shanaim Echalov. Ulven Shanaim Echalov means, it's, it's a bracha, the blessing that, that uh, Jacob gave to Judah, that your teeth should uh, be white, whitened with milk. Shalom Echalov. Rabbi Yochanan interprets this passage to mean like this. You have, you have two kinds of gifts. You have a gift of milk, and you have a gift of whitening your teeth. What does whitening your teeth mean? 
doesn't mean you go to uh, get your feet whitened. It means that someone talks to you in a way that makes you smile, and you can see their teeth. If someone's happy and they're smiling, you see their teeth. So what's better? Is it better to give someone a cup of milk, or is it better to get someone to give them your, their beautiful smile and you can see their actual teeth? Rabbi Yechanan says, It's better to give someone teeth than to give someone milk. So Yosef at Sadiq, he's looking at them, and he sees they're sad. And he sees that, and he doesn't, it's an incredible thing. The Ramban says like this, the Ramban says, think about Yosef Atzadik's persona in this situation. He has every right to be upset. His brothers hated him. His brother sold him as a slave. He's accused of a crime he didn't commit. So he's the first one who has a right, you would think, to feel like a victim, to be angry at the whole world, to be angry at everybody all the time. And instead, what does Yosef Atzadik think? He sees people which are down, and he's like, why could anybody be down? And that, that doesn't fit in his world. He has to, he has to frighten their spirits. He has to, because he feels like he has a reason to be there. He wasn't sold into slavery. He's on a mission there. He has a, he, God put him there. And every day he's doing his job. He's doing his mission. And he's thinking, why am I here today? What is my job here today? Why are there people in God's world that are, and not just that they, they have food, they have drink, they have everything they need. But he's bothered. Why aren't they happy? Why aren't they smiling? There's two teachings in Pricky Avis, Ethics of Our Fathers, about smiling to other people. One teaching is, it says, you should greet everybody, Rabbi Shammai says, the Savior upon him yafis, with a, with a smile. The, some, the Rabbi actually once said that Shammai learned this after his experience with Hillel. Remember that, you know, that story of the convert who came to Hillel, he converted me on one foot, and Shammai sent him away, and Hillel, Hillel inspired him? You know about that guy. So, you don't like my, my okay, thank you, Baruch. So, uh, the reason why Shammai taught greet everyone with a smile was because after his experience with the non-Jew, he saw that Hillel's way was right, and every person should greet with a smile. The Talmud says about Rabbi Yechem Zakir. Rabbi Yechem Zakir was the greatest genius. He knew everything. He knew the entire Torah. He knew the, 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 the whole spectrum of Torah study, from the laws of Abayi and Rava to Shemir Tukas Kongas, by the way, um, if one he, he knew the laws of Abai and Rava. He knew the, the story of God's chariot. He knew the, the language, get this, of the trees. Baruch, you know the language of the trees, right? Yes. You, you speak to them sometimes too, right? Okay, he did too. He, yeah. Abayach knew the language of the demons, the Gemara says. He knew so much. The and trees. The, yeah, the trees. Kalim. The Kalim, palm right. Palm trees, right, right. Yeah, they, 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 you're saying not, not the other trees they didn't know or, or they had different <laughs> language, even the palm trees. I don't know what the emphasis is on the palm trees. But that's what the Gemara says. That's right. That's what the word the Gemara, the color. So, and yet, despite him being such a genius, he never was second in saying hello. He always said hello first. And it was just he said hello to other rabbis or other Jews. He said hello to every single person first. He always greeted everybody first. In spite he was so up there intellectually, Wow. He never, he never was second in greeting anybody. Here is Joseph, Rabbi Yochanan, who was such a genius. He never said hello second. He was always first to greet someone. Now, the Sefer upon the office to greet everyone with a smile. The word of Beishamai, Sefer, has the same words as Svara. Svara means idea. Greet everyone with a smile doesn't just mean literally with a smile. It means greet everyone in a way that they'll have a positive idea. So the goal isn't that you should actually be happy and, and, and genuine in your smile. The goal is you, the person who is leaving you, they feel good. So you, in our world, well, not, it's better, it's, Yossi is better than that. Because in our world, it sounds disingenuous. It sounds, our world tells us, you know, to, to, what does Shakespeare say? Uh, to be true to thine self, right? To, to be, uh, most of all, be, no, Baruch knows the word. No, what does Shakespeare say? Above all? Be true to yourself? No, Shakespeare said it different. Above all, something like that. Be true to yourself. And that's what, the, uh, uh, you, you see all these Facebook posts and all these people posting about be, live your dreams, be genuine, be real. The Torah doesn't really subscribe to that philosophy. The Torah says that superficiality is underrated. There's an advantage of being positive to another person even when you feel lousy. A person walking away from you should just feel good. Even though you don't feel good, they should feel good. That's how the Medrash Shmuel explains this. They save upon the office, they should come away with a positive idea. Your face portrays to them something positive. Yeah. 
Above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. All right. That was good. Thank you. So that <laughs> the shikir, the goy, the shikir. Ripping, ripping off. The drunken, off the, the drunken man, the, the guy who used to drink too much. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so, the Zohar says more. The Zohar says it's not just your positive face brings positive things to other people. The Zohar says these words. It says in the Torah, God is your shadow. And the Zohar says that when you show a smiling, radiant face in this world, you bring God's kindness upon yourself. It could be that the Zohar is not just talking about smiling. It could be the Zohar is following another word in Ethics of Our Fathers. And there's another statement in Ethics of Our Fathers that says, um, be light be light to your leader. Be light to your leader means be, be affable. Uh, not be affable. Be, be light to your leader mean, mean, means be, be flexible to the person that you're working for. Kalarosh, be, be flexible to someone who you're, who's in charge of you. Have a be affable to the dark one, which means literally it means be be positive. Even someone's very younger than you, someone someone's a little kid, be be affable to them, be kind to them, be positive to them. And then it says a third thing: greet everybody with a smile. No, that's Shammai said that. Oh. This teaching says we greet everyone with joy. So it's not just about portraying a superficial smile. This teaching in the Mishnah says that you should uh, greet everyone with joy. So, the Ben Shmuel says, the first thing this means is someone comes to your house, and you're in a lousy mood, and you're going through all kinds of crazy stuff, and the person coming to your house is, uh, has to come out of your house feeling like, like that your pain and your problems aren't their, his problems, and he comes out feeling like everything's good in this guy's house. This is what a great, positive environment. That's um, Itzi Horowitz, as I just mentioned, I was, I was, uh, he shared with me when I was just, when I just visited him, he shared one of his articles. And in the article he writes about how, <laughs> it's, it's very funny. He says, my wife, Dina, thinks I don't get it. How can I always be so positive? I must not get it. So he gives like three answers. One of them was, first of all, my wife, Dina, is always right. And I just don't get it. Which is a good thing, maybe. Because that allows me to, uh, to always be besimcha and always look at, the, at, at, at things in a deeper way. Whatever. But um, so, 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 so he's a real example of what Medrash Shmuel explains the connection between these three teachings. These three, these three teachings sound very far out, far apart from each other. Uh, you be, when you have, work for somebody, be, um, be, be flexible, be positive when you greet somebody young, and greet everybody with symptoms. What do these three things have to do with each other? Medrash Shmuel says, you know, you know what your leader is? Who's your leader? The leader of all leaders, the king of all kings, God. Be, be, like a, be light like an eagle. God says to do something, be light. Be ready to go. Be, be let, let yourself go. Mm-hmm. Let, let let yourself go. That's that's the first teaching. The second teaching is be affable to the dark one. Literally, doesn't say to the young people. It says dark one. Young people don't have any gray hair. So this neichus means be kind, be affable to the dark. One. That's a literal translation. But then Shmuel says, you know, what the dark one is the dark times. The things that are going on in your life that you don't understand why they're ha- why those things are happening. But he says you should accept those things also with simcha. Because Hashem is doing it, and since Hashem is doing it, it must be that it's good. Because whatever the God does is good. So neil chesesheres means you should be positive even when you're going through something which 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 you don't understand why it's happening to you. If you understood why it was happening, it wouldn't be a, 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 a test. It's only a test when you don't know why it's happening. It's not like the emergency broadcast system when you're watching television. You beep. You know that's a test, right? You know when it's a test on a personal level when the question goes up in your head and it says. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. That's when you know you're in a test. So despite the fact that you're in a test, remember what's the key word for in your brain for a test? When, it, when is God testing you? When that question mark goes up in your head and it says, I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know why this is happening. And it's many, I don't know, mores. That's, that's when you're going through a test. So the Torah says, going through a test, accept Hashem's doing, whatever Hashem is doing for you, realize there's something deeper going on. That's what Yosef was doing. Yosef was able, in this incredibly hard situation, to feel this is God's world, this is good. And so much so he cannot stand to see that somebody else is down. Why are these people down? Don't they realize that Hashem is running the world, and this is good, and God's blessing us, and this is God's mission? Yosef did not feel that his brothers put him there. Yosef felt that God put him there, and, he has, and, and therefore he couldn't stand to see them. He couldn't stand by 
to see these people, which were not nice people. These people were the same kind of people that got Joseph put in jail. Joseph was put in jail by another minister of the Pharaoh. And these were also ministers of the Pharaoh. And Joseph could have been, but Joseph knew that if he, he is in someone's world and he's able to make someone life better, like you were just saying before, Joseph, about the person that you were able to give him advice, you, 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 that, that's, that's a big thing. A lot of people could just like gloss over things that oh, this person said or whatever. It's just, just a, a uh, acceptance. Thanks. So it, it's just a, just a nasty world, and that these things are just, are just terrible. But Joseph didn't feel that way. You know what happened? Those four words, those four words were the most impactful words in history. You know what those words did? Those words caused Yosef to become the person that was responsible for helping the entire world. He cared about one person or two people, and he cared not just that they should have their basic needs, just that they should, just that they should feel good. And that caused him to change the whole his whole circumstance that he became the viceroy, the second of e- command of Egypt, and what's, what's the message for us? The Rebbe says, coming to Hanukkah, Hanukkah is looking, looking like the darkness, the message for us is very simple, that just like Yosef, he, despite every reason he had to be upset, he brought Simcha to that dark place, so, so too a Jew has to feel that the people in his life, the people around them, you have to around us, we have to look for ways to bring Simcha to other people, to think that we're in the world for a reason, and the people around us, that, that they see someone's, someone's going through something, shouldn't just, just like Joseph thought about other people, the fact that he had all these challenges himself, the Torah is telling us to do the same, to learn from Joseph and to think about other people and, and to reach out to them and help them. <coughs> and that's what I wanted to share today. Any questions, comments, criticism, tomatoes, cucumbers?